So are you ready to start your new project but feeling frustrated with creating the walls and setting up the space? Not sure where to begin? In this video I'll show you three simple and effective ways to make it done. I guarantee there is at least one method you haven't tried yet and it will make your workflow much smoother. Method 1. Spline Modeling To begin, we'll use the spline modeling method. Before starting, make sure to activate the necessary snaps and enable access constraint. This will help you maintain better control throughout the process. Use the line tool to outline the walls, either from the inside or outside. Placing vertices at every window and door opening. Once your outline is complete, apply the extrude modifier. If you are working with a closed spline, uncheck caps and set the extrude height to match your desired wall height. After extruding, convert the object to editable poly. Use the Swift Loop tool to add necessary edge loops where your windows and doors will go. And delete polygons for these openings. To give thickness to your walls, apply the shell modifier. Adjust the inner or outer amount as needed to, and make sure to check straightened corners for uniform thickness throughout. Uncheck Auto Smooth Edge to remove any unwanted shadows. You can repeat this process for any other walls in your project and adjust as needed for specific situations. Watch the same process for the other walls in this scene in a time-lapse mode and see how quickly it all comes together. Next step, creating the floor. We'll use the line tool again to outline your floor plan. Close the spline, then apply the extrude modifier. This time activate caps and set the extrude amount to a negative value to keep your floor aligned with the grid. This makes it easier to place objects in the scene later on. To create the ceiling, Simply copy the floor to the top of your walls, set the extrusion amount to zero and deactivate the end cap. This will give you a surface facing downward into the interior. Right click on the ceiling, go to Object Properties and check Backface Cool. This is a great setting because it makes the ceiling invisible from the outside while keeping it visible from the inside. Now that your walls, floor and ceiling are in place, working forward with your project will become a breeze. Method 2. Using the 3ds Max Wall Tool Go to the Create panel, then navigate to Geometry, AEC Extended and select the Wall Tool. Adjust the width, height and justification, left, center or right, according to your project plan. Begin drawing the walls by clicking at each corner of your floor plan, ignoring any window or door opening for now. 
Repeat this process for each wall, adjusting the width as needed. To add doors, go to Create Geometry Doors. For this example, I will use the pivot door. From the top view, click and drag to define the door's width. Click again for the depth and the final click for the height. The door has various customizable settings including the frame, which can be toggled on or off, door lift parameters and paneling options. You can also control how open the door appears. 3ds Max automatically creates an opening in the wall for the door and it will adjust to any changes you make to the door settings. For a sliding door, follow the same creation steps. The settings are slightly different but still customizable. For Windows, go to Create Geometry Windows. In this case, I will use a fixed window. Similar to the door, use click and drag to define the window's width, then click for depth and for height. Set the window's vertical position using the Z absolute coordinate value. Adjust the frame settings and customize the number of horizontal and vertical panels to suit your design. Repeat this process for each window in your project and you'll have a fully customizable setup with doors and windows integrated smoothly into the walls. For the floor and ceiling, you can use the same method described earlier in the video. I'll simply copy them to fit the newly modeled walls. This method allows for quick and precise creation of walls, doors and windows all while maintaining flexibility for adjustments down the line. Method 3. Poly Modeling Begin by creating a plane and convert it into a editable poly. In Edge mode, use Shift plus Drag to extend the plane, shaping it to fit each part of the wall in your plan. Continue this process until you've covered the entire wall area. Select all the polygons and use Extrude multiple times to create edge loops at each level where you have door or window openings. For each door and window opening, select the polygons on both sides of the wall and apply the bridge tool to create the opening. For doors, delete the bottom polygons as they won't be needed.
And again, in this case, I will copy the previously created floor and ceiling. This polymodeling technique gives you full control over the shape and structure of your walls while allowing precise adjustments for door and window placements. These three methods offer different ways to create spaces in 3 Max, depending on your project. Spline modeling gives you detailed control over walls and openings, perfect for custom designs. The wall tool is fast and easy for basic setups, and it works well for adding quickly doors and windows. Polymodeling offers the most flexibility, making it great for complex and unique spaces. By learning these methods, you'll be able to choose the best approach for any project, making your process smoother and more efficient. For more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification button.